At any point in your investigation, did you find that President Biden directed his staff to conceal documents from you or anyone else? We did not reach that okay. conclusion. You would agree that hiding documents is a classic example of obstructing an investigation? It is an example of obstruction. Thank you. Donald Trump instructed his staff to delete security footage so that the FBI and special counsel could not see how he had tried to move and hide documents. Do you agree that attempting to delete video footage in this manner is plainly an attempt to obstruct an investigation? But I, I don't want to characterize the evidence in the case against former but President if <laughs> Third, special counsel Herr repeatedly emphasizes that President Biden's conduct contrasts sharply with that of former President Trump. Herr observes that unlike President Biden, quote, the allegations set forth in the indictment of Mr. Trump, if proven, would clearly establish not only Mr. Trump's willfulness, but also serious aggravating factors. What America sees today is evidence of one president who believes in the rule of law and works to protect it, and one who has nothing but contempt for the rule of law and acts solely in pursuit of his own constantly multiplying corrupt schemes. Damn! Well, if you had any doubt whether Robert Herr was in fact special counsel or a mere GOP operative, then I'm sure today's hearing cleared that up. And I want to give you a chance, since the transcript is out, uh, to correct the record on an important point. Uh, very sadly, uh, your report on page 208 says that Mr. Biden couldn't come up with the date, the year of his son, Beau Biden's death. When in fact, in the transcript, it shows that you asked him the month and do you know what he said, Mr. Herr? He said, oh God, May 30th. It was a tough day at the office for the special counsel, having to sit across from Democrats while they read his own words back to him. Some he had trouble recalling whether they were in the report or the transcript. Ironic considering how Robert Herr saw himself as quite the doctor, regarding Biden the wake of his report. He said, oh God, May 30th. Would you like to correct the record? His memory was pretty firm on the month and the day. Congresswoman, I don't believe that's correct with respect to the transcript, but if you could refer me to a specific page, I'd be happy to look. Uh, <laughs> and my second document to clarify for you, sir, Mr. Herr, uh, from the transcription, uh, page 82, the words are President Biden's. What month did Bo die? Oh God, May 30th. A searing memory, I ask unanimous consent. Without objection. Then there were those who drew clear comparisons to how President Biden responded to the special counsel's investigation versus his predecessor. Did you find that President Biden directed his lawyer to lie to the FBI? We identified no such evidence. Did you find that President Biden directed his lawyer to destroy classified documents? No. Did you find that President Biden directed his personal assistant to move boxes of documents to hide them from the FBI? No. Did you find that President Biden directed his personal assistant to delete security camera footage after the FBI asked for that footage? No. Did you find that President Biden showed a classified map related to an ongoing military operation to a campaign aide who did not have clearance? No. Did you find that President Biden engaged in a conspiracy to obstruct justice? No. Did you find that President Biden engaged in a scheme to conceal? No. Each of the activities I just laid out describe what Donald Trump did in his willful mishandling of classified information and his criminal efforts to deceive the FBI. In contrast, President Biden handed over documents without delay and complied fully with investigators. In fact, in a telling moment, Representative Dean went as far to ask her to read his own words aloud concerning his views on Trump's handling of classified documents and subsequent response to the investigation. That was not the case with Donald Trump. You have a copy of your report today, don't you, in front of you? I do. Could you read a portion of it for me? Uh, your words, it is page 11, starting on line three, beginning with the words. Unlike the evidence involving Mr. Biden, would you read the next few sentences? Unlike the evidence involving Mr. Biden, the allegations set forth in the indictment of Mr. Trump, if proven, would present serious aggravating facts. Keep going. Congresswoman, I'm happy to have you read the words in my report. Well, it's your report, so I think it actually is more fitting that you read those. Most notably, after being given multiple chances to return classified documents and avoid prosecution, Mr. Trump allegedly did the opposite. Keep going. According to the indictment, he not only refused to return the documents for many months, but he also obstructed justice by enlisting others to destroy evidence and then to lie about it. You may stop there. 
Thank you. But amidst the many highlights rounding out this Nightmare for the GOP was Jamie Raskin's remarks. Raskin, as we know by now, does not waste a single second of his time. And he outlined the real memory loss on hand, that in which her seems to have regarding his own views of the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, and how he acted while in possession of classified documents. You say, quote, most notably, after being given multiple chances to return classified documents and avoid prosecution, Mr. Trump allegedly did the opposite. According to the indictment, he not only refused to return the documents for many months, but he also obstructed justice by enlisting others to destroy evidence and then to lie about it. Have you any reason to change your judgment about the differences between President Biden's cooperation and the former president's non-cooperation? No, I continue to stand by those words in my report. With such a striking contrast, our colleagues have switched over from being impeachment investigators for constitutional high crimes and misdemeanors, which is how this whole thing started, to being it. amateur memory specialists, giving us their drive-by diagnoses of the President of the United States, whose soaring oratory, powerful historical analysis, and devastating extemporaneous repartee with even the most skilled ninja hecklers of the Freedom Caucus were on full display at the State of the Union address last week for the whole country to see. The desperate quest to invent an issue is a distraction from the 91 federal and state federal charges that Donald Trump faces now, his staggering civil court losses in New York now totaling more than a half a billion dollars, and his full blown embrace and romance with authoritarian dictators and communist tyrants all over the world, from Viktor Orban in Hungary to Vladimir Putin in Russia, the former head of the KGB, to the communist dictator of North Korea. The desperate quest to invent an issue is a distraction from the 91 federal and state federal charges that Donald Trump faces now, his staggering civil court losses in New York now totaling more than a half a billion dollars and his full-blown embrace and romance with authoritarian dictators and communist tyrants all over the world, from Viktor Orban in Hungary to Vladimir Putin in Russia, the former head of the KGB, to the communist dictator of North Korea. It's not, this, my friends, this is a memory test, but it's not a memory test for President Biden, it's a memory test for all of America. Do we remember fascism? Do we remember Nazism? Do we remember communism and totalitarianism? Have we completely forgotten the sacrifices of our parents and grandparents in prior generations? Well, we play pin the tail on the donkey in this wild goose chase, all of these silly games. Donald Trump entertains authoritarian hustler Viktor Orban at Mar-a-Lago for the weekend, and Orban comes out to declare that if we indeed sleepwalk into another Trump presidency, Trump will, quote, not give a, simple pen a single penny to Ukraine. That's what all of this is about. It's about trying to pull the wool over the eyes of America because the tyrants and dictators of the world are on the march today. So who wins with this ludicrous, embarrassing spectacle? Orban wins, Putin wins, she wins, the tyrants of the world win. They have one more reason to celebrate Donald Trump and his cult followers who've completely lost their way. They're looking for high crimes and misdemeanors. Now they appoint themselves amateur memory specialists and that's what they pounce on the president of the United States about. America faces a choice between democracy and tyranny. And the president laid it out at Valley Forge and he laid it out in the State of the Union. Will America stand on the side of people struggling against fascist aggression? For anyone who has really been paying attention, there was never a comparison in the first place. In fact, as one Fox News guest of all people outlined, it's more like comparing apples to dump trucks than anything else. I, first of all, I believe in the rule of law before a federal prosecutor. This is not apples to oranges, this is apples to dump trucks because just like Vice President but Mike Pence wrong? and Joe hey. Biden totally cooperated More. with the DOG versus what Donald Trump did, where they had to get a subpoena to go into more Lego. President Biden cooperated with the special counsel at every turn of the investigation, unlike the 45th president, who undoubtedly would have lathered the wall behind his TV screen with ketchup after this montage was played during the hearing. Live. Memories of all time. James Webb. I don't remember the names. 
Don't remember the name. Victor Orban. Did ever, anyone ever hear of him? He's the leader of Turkey. By the way, they never report the crowd on January 6th. You know, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley is in charge of security. Three years later, ladies and how about that? Did you actually have a one-on-one -on -one with Comey? Then? Not much, not even that I remember. I like Pesitos. We have languages coming into our country. We have nobody that even speaks those languages. They're truly foreign languages. Nobody speaks them. Saudi Arabia and Russia will repeat you. Oh. I have a really good memory. Your next wife was a woman by the name of Marla Maples. That's right. Do you recall what years you were married to Ms. Maples? Um, it's called like up here and it's called memory. I know my people, you'll say, all right, Trump, you did a good job, get the hell out of here, that's it. What today's hearing goes to show is that her intentions were so far from impartial, it's laughable. Despite on numerous occasions voicing his concern to the behavior of Donald Trump regarding classified documents, he veered away from personal remarks regarding his health and mental capabilities, but yet, reached for his white coat after speaking with Joe Biden. The only job her had was to investigate whether Biden willfully retained classified documents, which it was deemed he did not. It was not to go into detail regarding his cognitive capabilities. And the president was in front of and on top of it all, asking questions and requiring that America's military and intelligence community and diplomatic community would figure out and know how many people were dead. How many are Americans? How many hostages? Is the situation stable? He was in front of it all, coordinating and directing leaders who are in charge of America's national security, not to mention our allies around the globe for days and up until now, months. So the way that the president's demeanor in that report was characterized could not be more wrong on the facts and clearly politically motivated, gratuitous. And so I will say, that when it comes to the role and responsibility of a prosecutor in a situation like that, we should expect that there would be a higher level of integrity than what we saw. Especially when he was going to show off his lab coat when sharing his remarks on this dude. Love of Christ, the stories of the Holy Bible and the voices of famed evangelical people and Evangelists, uh, evangelists like. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.